I'm sorry it's been rather longer than I wanted it to be uh, since the, my last recording, but a number of things have been happening. And then when I was due to do it, there was of course the storm, and uh, that was a very traumatic for large numbers of people, but the rail service was obviously disrupted, and so unfortunately I uh, was unable to, to do it last Saturday, which is what I wanted to do. At any rate, here we are. Uh, now, before we begin today's video, Peter Fernick Live is going out, as you know, on the 22nd of February, and it's going to be in Dulwich Village uh, Hall. Um, it's St Barnabas's Hall, but it's d really Dulwich Village Hall. And I'd like to see any of those of you who want to come there. The evening will be devoted to, uh, I'll give a little talk to begin with, and then I would so much like stories from people, and if people have got any questions they want to ask, then that would be a really good time uh, to ask them. It's going to be, you start arriving at 6.30, and we'll begin either a quarter to seven or seven o'clock and it will go on for an hour and a bit. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and I, I think it should be a fun evening. Now what do you think is sitting on my lap? Yes you're absolutely right it's Casper Cat and uh, he's just been fed and he's decided that he, what, he, what he wants to do is to go to sleep and he's selected my lap to sit on but that's Casper's nature. Now today we're going to do or we're going to start on light. Light is absolutely fascinating um, and I have some course books for you. This is by Anna Katrin, it's called Light and uh, and it is uh, an amazing study of uh, experiences of light and we'll do a little bit of that today. Then next time I'll do this because uh, this is Shining Light on Transcendence. In fact uh, it's a book about a man who can produce uh, light when he meditates in other people, so, so uh, I think it's quite interesting. And then uh, in, this is your other course book you remember, it's The Art of Dying, and this contains um, a number of light uh, stories and accounts, particularly transfiguration ones at the time of death. So light is uh, really closely associated with the mystical. So let's start then. So let's start with light. Light is the most amazing substance. We know now it's an electromagnetic variation and that the colours are different frequencies of light. And it goes from the infrared right up to the ultraviolet. Light is absolutely fundamental for biology. We know very well that plants convert light uh, into uh, sugars, uh, with chlorophyll being one of the agencies by which they do it. And we know what happens to plants if they are deprived of light. They become very weak and anemic, and many die. Now light not only has that effect on plants, it got it on, uh, it also has the similar effects on animals and also on human animals, on us. And many of you, I think, will know all about seasonal affective disorder, SAD, which is due to uh, people whose genes are regulated to some extent by light. And if you go through long periods of no light, then you may get a depressive illness and of course it occurs in those seasons where light is absent. So to thrive we also need light. Now light has one other characteristic 
and that is that it is in fact part of transcendent experiences what do I mean by transcendent experiences those very wide experiences that we have sometimes so wide that we actually feel cosmic ourselves or, or uh, so wide that we become one uh, again uh, with the cosmos now I want to talk just a little bit about those today and we need to think about uh, the relationship between mind and light although we'll do this more completely next time when we do uh, my book so has are there any stories yeah lots of stories um, I'm t taking one from Anna Katrina's book and it's one right very near the beginning she talks about two people who've gone up a mountain and it starts to snow it starts to get dark and quite frankly they're lost they think they know where they're going but they're lost and they walk on and trudge on and it, it's they're not don't seem to be getting anywhere suddenly a warm feeling like a wind blew on to the woman's face there was a man and a woman and she looked towards it which was to the left in fact and there was a ball of light and she asked her husband if he could see it and he couldn't and this is actually not uncommon and even in the light which occurs when you're dying some members of the family see it and other members don't so she asked her husband if he could see it and he said no and as she started to move um, the light seemed to be pulling her so she decided that she would follow the light because it was a very calming light a very influencing light one which you really felt you had to follow and remember they're lost on the mountain and so this light was uh, enormously important to them well as as she started to follow it it rolled in front of her and it, it rolled uh, at such a speed that they could both keep up with it and what was interesting is that the light was moving 90 degrees away from the direction in which they were traveling so it was a right angle bend like that and they followed the light for about an hour and a bit and then suddenly the light disappeared and that was it and they felt that they'd been abandoned on the mountainside but when they looked very carefully they found they they thought they could see the shapes of roofs and in fact the light had brought them to the village now that is a sufficiently astonishing in itself but not only that you remember that they had to turn 90 degrees to their left well uh, had they not done that um, then they probably would have missed the path would have got even more lost in the mountains but it would have been another 30 kilometers to the next village going that way now on a cold freezing day in a blizzard on a mountain walking for 30 kilometers uh, you'd be very lucky if you survived it so we can see that the light there guided them uh, to safety now where did it come from well in transcendent experiences light is quite common uh, for example uh, you can be uh, suddenly overcome by light uh, in a field and you always go non-dual remember we talked about non-duality and you come to be part of the cosmos and join with the cosmos uh, I have a, a great friend she's died now Thetis Blacker and Thetis uh, 
I was a very, very good painter. She used to do batik paintings, so she painted on silk. And uh, she has paintings uh, up in Winchester Cathedral, and she has paintings uh, in the chapel at uh, Windsor. So she is a very competent lady, and she describes what happened to her. She says, I walked into the field, and when I got right into the middle of the field, then um, I became aware of this overpowering light, and her consciousness changed. She saw light everywhere, it seemed to emanate from everything. And what did it consist of? What it usually does, which is, which is love. So it was a loving, expansive light, and she became non-dual, she became part of the universe. And she felt that she'd seen the beginning of all things and the end of all things. And she felt that uh, she knew what the purpose of the universe was. And she uh, was uh, enormously, uh, really subsumed by the light and her, her sensation changed and she says the um, the, the wind that uh, the very light gentle breeze that there was in the middle of the field when it brushed against her cheek it seemed like a mighty rushing wind and she says like the wind that the disciples felt at Pentecost or reported to have felt at Pentecost so it was an enormously wide experience and of course uh, experiences like this change your life and Thetis life was changed uh, very dramatically and she knew after this that she had to become a painter and she's she, an amazing painter. Now uh, light does occur spontaneously like that but it can occur in other situations too. For example, it can um, occur when you meditate. Now, my second, the second talk on light is going to be with uh, Alain Forget. Um, I think his picture may be at the back, no it's not. Uh, Alain Forget is, I'll tell you all about him later, but when he meditates, people see light. But you can do this yourself because there are some meditations which allow you to see light. There is one where you get quieter and quieter and quieter and go deeper and deeper and deeper into your mind until when you're really quiet then the mind will start glowing. It will be as if the emanation of light is coming up from it. So uh, the, whole, the whole concept then of the relationship between meditation and light is a very important one. And please do note that it's always related to the dimension or in the direction of transcendence. That means it's move in the direction of an expansion of consciousness uh, when you experience the light. Uh, but not only can you get it through meditation, uh, you remember that I talked a little bit about light when uh, I was talking about death. And light at death is, is really not uncommon and it occurs just at the end and there are two forms in which light occurs. One is that you will go and um, uh, that you will go and uh, into the area of increased consciousness, and there it's full of light. But not only that, light is seen in the room. Uh, you get. Um, uh, globules of light, strings of light, light uh, rather like um, 
the little candle flames and we have some wonderful accounts of light so light in the death process happens but um, <coughs> light <coughs> excuse me is also seen uh, in in other conditions and uh, these are spontaneous uh, occurrences of the light sometimes it's related to uh, change in mood um, if you become very hy hypermanic very overactive and your mood increases sometimes uh, light is associated with that but if you're very depressed and sad and melancholy and in the dark then it may be terminated by by um, the experience of light so light is is enormously important and I very much like the story that we began with that uh, light is associated with transcendent experiences which can be uh, enormously positive for you uh, I think that it's just worthwhile uh, stressing again although I did it in the video on their death experiences that the tunnel leads to the light and the light there is a cosmic light the light there is very bright but doesn't burn you the light there is very loving and holding and reassuring and comforting and uh, the clock as you see is uh, I've got it to go and in fact it's uh, on the right time so um, the, uh, the the light uh, in death is important just want to go back to meditation again because there is one scientific paper which has been published on light in meditation and this one shows that uh, the people who see the light usually in a retreat after several days of meditation may just burst with light and light is all around them and in them and their experience is of light and also it again goes into these globules and strings that you that you see at uh, uh, in the death process so light uh, uh, again has an importance the physics of light of course is interesting because the particle of light is a photon and uh, what quantum mechanics has told us is that uh, a particle of photon is a particle uh, is localized so the photon is localized but when it's uh, in its wave function it's distributed throughout the universe and there are some people who've written nice stories in the cards of, of the universe being based on light so uh, some of you will have had transcendent experiences do write in about them because I'd very much like to hear them and of course I expect people would like to hear about them on February the 27th when we do Peter Fennick live so let me end I'm amazed that Casper has been so quiet but I think it's just because he's been fed uh, so, so let us end with then the, the idea that light is fundamental it carries truth it carries uh, vision of the future it carries uh, expansion it carries uh, cosmic feelings within you uh, and so uh, an understanding of light is something which is very important well that's enough on light for today and, tomorrow, uh, and so next time we'll be doing uh, 
our book Shining Light on Transcendence. And this is because Alain Forget is a man who, when he meditates, can make people see light. And so uh, I was intrigued by this, and so I, I studied him. And uh, that's really what the book is about. Okay, so thanks very much indeed. And uh, have a good night or a good day. And we'll, I hope that we will meet again at the end of this week, today being Tuesday. Okay.